Uh, I want to share with you uh, a little passion that I have. It's a couple of stories. When I was a little boy, I always had this passion for, for cars. I love cars. I, I would collect books and stamps. And, and even when I didn't understand how cars work, uh, I'm, my father was never good at mechanics. Nobody in my family, actually. I didn't understand cars, how they work, why they move, but I always feel these goosebumps. And uh, I'm still old. I cannot consider myself a mechanic expert, but uh, I still feel goosebumps and uh, my eyes water every time I see a beautiful car or hear the sound of a roaring engine, high speed. I can tell you the story of this man who shared the same passion for mechanics. Does anybody recognize this man? Do you know who this is? Great. <laughs> this man is the son of a family of farmers in Modena, Italy. A farmer, a kid from farmers. He went to war and he became a mechanic. He was very famous in war because uh, he was a genius doing uh, uh, repairing mechanic, uh, repair, repairing cars and repairing machinery, improvising with used spare parts, nothing new, just used spare parts. So people thought well, this guy is a genius of mechanics. So when the war finished, he used the same ability and started his business. He started building tractors for agriculture out of uh, derelict military machines. His business grew. He became very famous, very successful. A lot of money building this kind of mechanics. With that money, he started buying uh, sport cars. He loved sport cars, who doesn't? And uh, his favorites were Ferraris. I love Ferraris. He bought three of them, actually. And it wasn't until he bought his third car, the 250 GT, that he was actually a little bit disappointed and he was frustrated, but he needed to fix the car all the time. All the time he needed to take the car to Maranello to fix the clutch system because it wasn't right, it wasn't working for him. And he also thought, that it was, uh, Ferrari had a lack in sales, after sales service. So while well, he said, I'm, I know mechanics, I know about this stuff, let me talk to the boss. He went to Enzo Ferrari directly to tell him his complaints, and Enzo Ferrari told him, did you just drive tractors? You don't know about cars, you could never drive a Ferrari. So this man said, okay, I'm gonna make my own car company, and I'm gonna show you how it should be done. The name of this man who built this company out of passion and out of spite, Ferruccio Lamborghini. This man with such passion that he, would, he wanted to build cars only to show to Enzo Ferrari that he knew how to build a perfect car. In 1966, Lamborghini launched the Miura. This car was so innovative at that time. It was the first time that any car company would build a V12 mid-rear engine. It was so innovative that it will set up the standard for what sport cars and supercars will be in the future. The funny thing about this car is that Ferruccio Lamborghini, he didn't want to build this car. He wanted to build cars that were comfortable to drive, not noisy, Grand Tura car. But his team of engineers, they wanted to build this. So they took their spare time at night to develop this car. So it wasn't really an official project from Lamborghini. So 
a company built for, um, uh, for passion, out of passion, developed a product out of passion that set up the standard for what it would be uh, supercars in the future, a milestone in car industry, if you call it. Passion is a very powerful force that combined with a firm purpose can give amazing results and in some cases even change the world. In 1997, Steve Jobs and Lee Club, they created an advertising campaign that it's, it's so amazing, the TV spot, that I think it, it contains in it what it is, passion and purpose. I want to share with you this commercial. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the school, square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. Now, the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things and they push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Now, how beautiful is that? Steve Jobs, he didn't have a superpower or a gift from nature. He had a brain like everybody else's here. He was actually the combination of a perfect equation of passion, purpose, discipline, and innovation. That was all that was made. Uh, that was what made Steve Jobs what he was. Companies like this one, Apple, Google, Twitter, or Asia, Facebook, Amazon, Virgin. What these companies have in common, none of these companies were built for money. None of them. Actually, some of these companies, they struggled at first to make money. They didn't know how to make money. All these companies, they were conceived to find a solution to a certain specific problem, to fill a niche that was left empty, to satisfy necessities. And they grow understanding their purpose because the purpose of this company is what makes them. They didn't want to compromise their core philosophy, their values. They want to keep doing what they were built for and still find a way to make money. Purpose should never be money. Uh, money is just a consequence, not the purpose. Uh, this is a philosophy that I always work with and I try to encourage on people who work with me all the time. You cannot expect to perform nothing but in a mediocre way if you go to work just for a salary, just for a paycheck. You cannot perform, you cannot excel. When you do something that you don't feel passion for without a purpose, you can expect nothing for being mediocre. And uh, I think we all been, we all been there. It's, you can work, you can go to work and do your job well enough so you don't get fired. And uh, at the end of the day, you wait for the bell to dismiss you, and then you go home with your family, and you can repeat that day after day, after day, years and years and years, until frustration is so, so common that you don't notice it anymore. You just live and die like that, frustrated, and you don't even notice. And I think... Uh, our time, well, you, can, you have the choice or you can 
change and try to do something different. Get out of your comfort zone and try to do something different. We cannot allow ourselves to be victims of uh, our own frustration, especially in a country like China, which has the highest IQ in the world. That's a fact. You people are the smartest in the world. And <laughs> you cannot waste your beautiful brain and your time like that. Financial security is not necessarily success. I understand that in Chinese culture, uh, we always look for security. But uh, I'm telling you, it's frustrating at the end. When you go back in your life and you think of what you did, and you just gather money. It's... Uh, unsatisfying and there is nothing wrong with money don't get me wrong money is great <laughs> it's great to have money it's great to spend money to share money it's beautiful but when the money becomes the only purpose in your life it can be a problem because when you try to innovate to make money you might come with solutions that are not very ethical for example, this stuff. I think the people who came up with this idea is a genius, very creative, but it's not ethical. What if uh, we take that oil and instead of cooking, we develop a little further and we go to some scientists and we use it for fuel, for energy, other purposes. Not the easy way. It's, uh, it's the kind of problem that we have when we just follow money, what is only only purpose. Oh, passion and purpose. When you, when you identify your passion, when you follow your passion and you find a purpose in life, then you are ready to innovate. Then you're ready to do something different. But you have to remember that Ethical innovation is always about finding creative solutions to the problems of many. You cannot uh, innovate uh, only for yourself unless you're not affecting somebody else. And you, you have to, your innovations have to affect people, have to influence people in a positive way. It is a responsibility, actually. When you have the power to change things, it is a big responsibility. So, changing the world, you say, yeah, okay. You can change the world in many ways, from a filing system in your office to, to I don't know, make your, your work more effective, to create something that can change the life of a lot of people. And you may think, well, yeah, changing the world, it sounds easy, it's, it's like a task too ambitious for one person to achieve. There are certain belief systems that sustain that when you save a soul, one single soul, you have made as many blessings as like you save the whole world. And I do believe that if you can create something that can change the life of a group of people, or it can change the life of at least one person in a positive way, you can consider yourself successful. Initiatives like the, the library project can show you that with a modest, honest effort, you are they're changing the life of a lot of students and improving, actually, their opportunities. But it's, it is surprisingly achievable. When you put the purpose and you have the passion, it is very achievable to change. And you don't need to change the whole country. There are so many issues that are that need to be addressed in a creative way. There is plenty to do. There is a space for everybody's innovation. So it's just a little bit of effort, a modest but passionate effort. So remember, passion and purpose is the way to do things different, the way to innovate. Gracias.